guy shows up that he don't even rec- they don't even recognize and just begins to expound on them the things past and present and and they just they just look at each other like you know this is this is a very special day <laughs> This is a special day. <laughs> yes, sir. And that's the way I'm feeling right now in my spirit. Right now is, is I feel like I've had a personal invitation before the master that says, just come belly up to the table. And I want to talk to you about some nutritional facts of my food. Okay? And I'm telling you right now, I am just, I'm so excited. Sister Woodley, I got to do something first. And this is not embarrassing by no means at all. I'm going to read the scripture text, and then I'm pointing at it towards your business, okay? We're going to stand right now. Let's read the scripture text. Hallelujah. And I have not spoke to Sister Woodley about her business. I don't even know if she's still in business. But I can tell you this. I can tell you this. There is a tremendous blessing. When I say a tremendous blessing, says we'll read the scripture that he gave me and then pointed you out. And I'll let you take it to see what you think. Okay? St. John's. We're going to be in the uh, 21st chapter of St. John's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. St. John's, the 21st chapter. We're going to begin at verse 5. Hallelujah. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? Mm. And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Okay? Now I want you to imagine this. The right side of the ship ain't too far from where you've been fishing. Okay? That's just on, I don't know the distance or the width of the ship, but that's all the distance there is. And the same fish that you've been trying for over there should be able to find your nets over here. But they is obedient. They said, uh, they answered him no, and he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were therefore, excuse me, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter had heard it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat on him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. And Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, and a hundred and fifty and three. For all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. And Jesus saith unto them, Come and die. Sister Woodley, what I'm going to believe for your business is this that he is going to multitude in ways that you could not even understand, fathom, or even think about on this present day. Now, whether he's going to multiply in monies, I have no idea about that, but I can tell you this, that the net ain't been too far away. You listen to his direction, because that's what all this is about. He gave them direction, and it was simple. All they got to do is take what they've already been doing and put it in a different location, Mm. okay? Whatever God wants to do with your business, sis, I, I'm all for it. If we'd stretch, stretch out our hands towards Sister Whitley, please. I'm taking this real serious, folks. I didn't pick out just her just so I could start off a real good message. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to not only just touch, bless, anoint. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. with such a special, special, special love special peace special joy i'm talking about a presence so strong dear god that people just begin to weep they begin to just call out on your name i don't know what it all entails and that's between you and her god but i want there to be such a special touch 
and special healing upon yes, that business, in the name dear of God. Jesus right now. Let it be not only a healing to that business, but a healing to the family. And go on and on and on. Let there be no end to this healing process, dear God. Mm -hmm. Father, I love and I thank you. Could we clap our hands unto the Lord? title of this today is the day the manna stopped mm. the day the manna mm. stopped hallelujah hallelujah anybody in here just by the showing of your hand know Jesus Christ to be a way maker and I'm talking about a way maker when there honestly seems to be no way at all no way at all hallelujah anybody in here just by waving your hand want to sit at his table today could you imagine, I want you to just use your imagine right, imagination right now. Imagine you're bellied up to his table. And there's all kinds of things, that, things you don't even recognize. I'm talking about those, those foreign fruits and those foreign vegetables that you've never seen before. And, and, he, and he, takes, he takes this one bowl and he, and, he, and he brings it to you. And man, you can't even recognize this stuff. So what is it? He said, well, this is forgiveness. And this forgiveness right here is the most horrible thing to taste. <laughs> but it has such healing properties to it. It won't taste good to your tongue at all. But it will heal everything that's down inside of you. Could you imagine coming up to that table today? That table that says, you know what? I forgive everybody that has ever hurt me in my lifetime. Take a moment right now. We're going to close our eyes. Lord, please bring to my mind if there is anyone today that would suffer from such pain and such heartache from that thing called unforgiveness. Could you please begin to breathe and begin to touch everyone under the sound of my voice and let them, dear God, see the fruit and just reach their hand out reach their hand out and just take a little piece of it and just begin to put it in their mouth and say god you know what i can't even eat this without your help i can't even consume this without your abilities would you help me eat this lord today would you help me consume this today that i could really be free and i'd be able to sing that song i am free Praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, there's no chains holding me, my soul is, go ahead church, come on, such a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Could we clap our hands unto Hallelujah. the Lord right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Love you. Ooh. Oh, Friend, I, I'm, I'm really wanting to start. I'm really wanting to start, and man, it just, it just seems like, but we're going we to fly. We're just going to fly today. Could turn it with Philippians. Go to Philippians chapter 4 with me today. You'll have to forgive me, man. I am just, I'm beside myself. I am just, he has melted my butter today. He is, hey, anybody like a lot of butter on your popcorn? He has just gave me that bowl to where your hands are just so messy. When I say so messy, you can't, it's down your chin. It's all over your face. And you just keep putting handful and handful after and just getting all you can, you know? Somebody wants to come take a little bit out of your bowl, and, and you can't even, you ain't even got the heart to tell them, no, I want this all to myself, but I'm telling you right now, Hallelujah. he has Hallelujah. blessed in Hallelujah. such ways. Hallelujah. 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 Philippians. As soon as my fingers work, I will find it. I promise you, folks. Philippians. Oh, hey, I got it printed out. That's why. I thank you, Lord. I didn't even need my cheaters for this. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, 
and whatsoever things are honest, and whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure, and whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I want you to turn to your neighbor, if you would, and say, this is Paul's diet, okay? Paul's diet was completely different than yours and I, right? How does he handle being shipwrecked? How does he handle being stoned? How does he handle all the multitude of pain and suffering that he dealt with, and he takes it but light affliction? How do you do that, folks? I have the hardest time when somebody says something bad to me. I'm, I'll be honest. I work at work, and, and they, they, they've shut all the windows and doors, and they've got a seven-story dryer, and this seven-story dryer is about 450-some degrees, okay? You want to talk about a heating up a building? Leave your, leave your oven on about 450 and go stand by it for a while and tell me whether or not you would like to shut the door and shut the oven off. Well, we got this guy there at work, and he's over quality control of all the product. And he figures it's, it's easier to just have everything hot inside, that way bacteria can't come from the, the cool air coming in from the windows and condensating in the product lines. Everybody understand this? Man, Brother Woodley, I'm up there all week long. I'm up there. I raised me up one of them windows. Now, hey, I see him show up. I got both guns packed. Hey, I'm daring him to come over there and tell me to shut one of them windows. I'm daring him to come over and tell me, hey, you're going to have to keep that window shut. Because, see, don't get me wrong. I need to lose weight. Okay? I'm probably part of the 80th percentile. Okay? I need to lose some pounds. I don't just need to lose it all in one week. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is there's that old man that is just in that nature. And I'm thinking to myself, my, is, what is my diet? What does my diet consist of? This morning, this is what he dealt with me about. He said, I want to talk to you about nutritional facts. He said, I want to talk to you about eating my meat, eating my flesh, and drinking my blood, yeah. and the significance that it has in your everyday life. Amen. Oh, his focus on the supply instead of the need in my life, okay? Focus on the supply. His nutritional facts, it will, it will supply all of your needs according to his riches. Now, if we knew eating his food would do all that for us, you'd think we'd just jump right in the line. But I'm telling you right now, my body has been craving everything but the right nutrients. Anybody in here know that you're putting something into your body and it's not have, it doesn't have any nutritional value? Kroger's ice cream, two for five bucks. I have had Baby Ruth and Butterfinger are my two flavors, okay? And they ain't helped me not one bit. But it seems like every time I go to Kroger's, they're right there saying two for five. That's affordable. That's affordable. And you, you know something's bad with the ice cream because it really doesn't freeze in the freezer. That should tell you something right off the bat that there's way too much sugar in this stuff if it don't even freeze in the freezer. So anyway, God has been talking to me this morning about nutritional facts. And to know what, is, what you have need of for the body. And what if, what if, I want you to imagine this. I've gone to the store before. Anybody in here supply the people at work with some food? Raise your hands if you do. When I go to the store, I'm that guy that I'm not just thinking about me, but I'm thinking about Alex, and I'm thinking about Ryan, and I'm thinking about Jimmy. What could I share with the guys, right? Okay. The well, Lord showed me this morning. He said, what if the lad, anybody remember the story about the lad with the, with the few fishes and a few loaves, and he gave, he gave his few fishes and loaves, and, and, and the Lord multiplied it? This, this was mind-blowing to me. He showed me in my mind, and he said, what if that lad woke up that morning, and as he was packing that lunch, and whether it be a sack or whether it be a basket, with the intent to share? What if we every day had a different mindset, Come on, yes, sir. and our mindset changed to the place to where it was no longer seeing myself all the time, seeing my needs all the time? But I, I packed myself a spiritual bag every day that said, you know what? 
I'm putting lots of love in here because I know people that need a lot of love, <laughs> okay? Oh, and I'm, pu- I'm putting a lot of mercy in here because I've come across some people that need some mercy, come on in, okay? Mm. Imagine if he allowed you every day to pack your own lunch. Mm. Any young kids in here like to say cold lunch is what they talk it, okay? My kids was always big about cold lunch. Oh, I don't want to have to eat hot lunch. Can I take a lunch with me, please? It was a big deal for them to take a cold lunch. But they got to take what they wanted, Okay? It was their choice instead of what the school offered. What if our choices in the morning was to set our day out completely so right Mm. that it didn't even involve us? I heard an analogy and I thought it was so amazing. The guy, he was an older man, took a young man to a window and said, look out this window. He said, what do you see? And and it it was inside of a house looking outside. Well, I see grass and I see trees. And he said, well, watch this. And he takes him over to a mirror He said, now this is a piece of glass, but has a little bit of silver involved in it. And he said, who do you see now? He said, all I can see is myself. And he said, do you notice how the little bit of silver, a little bit of wealth sometimes, can all of a sudden block our view of seeing others the way we should see others? And I, granted, I understand not everybody in here, I'm not talking to a whole bunch of rich folks, you know, but what I am saying is this, is we can have that silver that's in the glass mess us up sometimes to where you can't see clearly your neighbor's needs or your brother and your sister's needs. Wouldn't it be awesome if you came in and there's a checklist God just gives you and says, well, you know, Sister Sister Creeth needs this today and Sister Pope needs this today and Brother Creeth needs this today and I want you just to go get in your sack and give it to them. Anybody in here wouldn't do that? There's not a one of us that would not do that. But yet the spirit, there is a groaning in the spirit that says, you know what? I've given you gifts. I want you to use them. Okay? I was scared to death to even mention Sister Woodley's name. I knew she would take it understandably. But but you hate to even talk like that because they may have not heard what you heard. And when you go and share stuff like that, you're you're out on a limb. And sometimes the things you're, you're sawing your own branch, it seems like. That, but that's the trust factor in God is, you know what? Yes, yes. If you gave me a gift, Lord, yes. and you thought that I was deserving enough for your gift just because you're, I was deserving enough to receive your spirit, surely you want me to utilize that gift. Mm-hmm. Anybody in here believe that God's given them a gift? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Everybody can put up their hands. Yes, yes. I promise yes. you. Everybody in here has got a gift. He, he don't send you out empty. Did he send out any of the apostles empty? No. No. Mm -mm. So in case you haven't utilized your gift lately, ask him while you're packing that lunch in the morning. As a matter of fact, I'm praying that this part right here, if you don't remember nothing else in this whole entire message, that tomorrow when you get up to go to work, Mm -hmm. there's going to be that urge in you to pack a lunch. Pack a lunch. And you'll be saying to yourself, I don't even like oranges. Put the orange in the sack. (laughs) Pack a lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll be packing things that you don't even like just to share with others. Anyway, can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. 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 Some nutrients, items that God provide are seasonal. Have you ever had something in your life that just tasted great? God was bringing something into your life and you're saying to yourself, oh God, don't ever let it stop. The joy that's overflowing me right now. The peace that is overtaking me right now. Please don't ever let it stop. But then all of a sudden, it seems like the food ran out for a little bit. And you get to chew on something else for a while. Okay? And what God was explaining to me was, he says, there are seasonal items. He said, go to your grocery store. He said, there's times when strawberries. Anybody have a fresh strawberry? Like Pastor was talking about today. Fresh strawberries. A taste. I used to live in the country. Anybody, raise your hand if you lived in the country. Wild strawberries would grow in the ditches where I lived, okay? Wasn't little big, wasn't big at all. And we'd go down picking those wild strawberries. And hey, I don't know if there was pesticides back at that time or not. I didn't care as a kid. I'm, man, I'm picking and eating, picking and eating. But I couldn't pick and eat those in the wintertime. There's certain times of your spiritual life that when you know it's picking time pick with everything you've got (laughs) because you know why you won't always have that picking time does that make sense what I'm saying 
and you'll say to yourself, well, why do I have to have times to where I got to eat this instead of eating that? Everything has nutritional value if we're talking about it in the kingdom of God, right? And you'll say to yourself, well, why do I got to have this person in my life? They bring something to the table. They're bringing a whole lot to the table. You will not know how to love. Matter of fact, you will not even know what his marvelous light is all about until you can have that special persons or person in your life that manifests Christ's love in you. That all of a sudden you didn't even know you could love this good to somebody. You know, you didn't even know you could forgive this well to somebody until he served you up that dish and said, you know what? This dish isn't here to kill you. This, this dish is going to heal you if you'll let it heal you. And you can be that two-year-old if you want and just kick it away and sit in that high chair until all of a sudden you just fall asleep because you ain't getting out of the high chair until you eat it. Okay? I, and I know I'm in a day and age now, and I was one of those guilty parents that if you didn't like something, we'll work around it. Okay? But I'll be honest. I don't think I helped them. I think I hurt them a whole lot by not making them eat some stuff that wasn't real good to this tongue. Because not everything that you put on this tongue, it, it's going to like it. I don't like spinach. But you know the, the, the nutritional facts of spinach? Come on. Kale, okay, greens of any sort, you know, vitamin K, packed with vitamin K. And you'll say, Brother Thornton, what if I become vitamin deficient? What if I'm malnutrition to where I'm not getting? Did you know that the eyes, the teeth, the hair, the nails, the muscles and joints, your mouth, skin, and your emotional mentality are all things that are affected by nutrition deficiencies. And you'll say, well, I know it can't be my mouth because I speak nothing but blessings. <laughs> hey, can I share something with you? This is what he shared with me this morning. The, the deficiencies, anytime you are in a deficient place, complaining will overtake you. And you'll say, well, I didn't even know I was malnutritioned. <laughs> if you've got nothing but complaining that comes out of your heart and out of your mouth, I'm letting you know right now, you need a good ray of God's sunshine in your heart and your mind. You need a good dose of love to wipe out that mouth from all that complaining. Because has complaining brought anybody anything beneficial? I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to know what the benefits are of complaining because I've tested and tried it plenty of times, plenty of times. I'm so glad that gentleman didn't walk up to me yet this last week. He wouldn't have got the right Brother Thornton at all, okay? I don't know if you guys have been, okay, any moms in here have been hot, sweaty from cleaning the house or whatever you was doing, and the kids, they don't get the best mom at that time, do they? Okay, they get the mom that's tired and irritable and the one that just wants to sit down and kick her feet up. Am I right or wrong? Okay. I think there's times that we let life wear us out because of the nutritional intake that we take in. And you would be more vitalized, energized, and then be in the right mentality if we ate the right thing. Come on, Jesus. Lord. And I'm talking, about, I'm talking about myself here in the, in the first and foremost, I have struggled with diets. I have struggled with, come on, God, would you just give me the desire? You, so, you told me, God, that desire is the birthplace of achievement. And if you'll give me the desire, I'll live this life for you. Okay? And this message has been that message for me. I don't care if anybody, I pray you get something out of it, but this has been my Damascus Road experience today for me. Because he's talking to me about so much nutritional need in the church. How we need to understand the nutrients that's gained by everything. Even though it may come just but for a season. Do, do you know that the bread that he told us to eat was not just seasonal? Anybody in here got a clue as to how often we're supposed to consume it? Daily. daily? So if it's daily and it's not seasonal, that means that's something that's called vital. I have got an app on my phone that I, I, I have a hard time reading the Bible. Raise your hand if you have a hard time reading and understanding the Bible. So what I have done is I downloaded an app. And that app sits there and reads the Bible for me. 
And man, I can go through all kinds of chapters listening to that guy. As a matter of fact, he even they have different voices in there to where they can even make sounds like there's sheep in the background. The dramatized version. I didn't think I'd like the dramatized version. But do you know that I was in the basement, working on the basement, and I listened to probably six or seven chapters worth of the Bible? And you'll say, well, that don't count. You didn't read it for yourself. I'm telling you right now, it was amazing how many times from just being in the church and listening in the church that you could be able to repeat the next verse that's beyond that one. And, and you tell me that ain't feeding something? You tell me that ain't nourishing something going on in there? And, I, and you'll say, well, Brother Thornton, does it count just to listen to somebody read it? Give it a try. You give it a try, you come back to me and you tell me whether or not it was fulfilling to you or if it was just something that you just couldn't handle. But I'm telling you right now, you don't even, and, and I'm not recommending not paying attention, but you can be doing something else, but it's soaking in. It's almost like you're standing in the rain, and, and he just takes away the umbrella and says, you know what? You may not intend to get soaking wet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wet you down real good. I'm going to soak you real good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Don't limit his giving, I got to put my glasses on right here, what it says, his giving avenues. Has anybody ever tried to give you something and you refused it? Mr. Pride standing right here. You don't know how many times I've told people because I can't pay them back that I won't receive anything from them, okay? Every time I was leaving my mom's house, do you need anything? Are you okay? Can I give you some money? Nope, I'm fine. I could be as broke as broke gets. And you think I'm going to ask my mom for a dime? It's that pride issue that comes up. But I'm overcoming barriers now. Just borrowed 300 from my mom the other day. And you'll say, well, that ain't no big deal. For you, it might not be. Maybe, maybe borrowing money from somebody has always been your easy, easy thing to do. But for me, it's not. I'm telling you right now. It has been tough. And, and matter of fact, I've gotten so good, I, I even borrowed some money from Stephen. I'm kind of liking this here borrowing thing. It's that paying back stuff, you know. <laughs> but you'll say to yourself, now how can that be nutritional to you to borrow something from somebody? Or if they want to give it to you, just taking it. Because I'm letting you know something right now. There's, there's worms that gets inside of us that are robbing us of the nutrition and one of those worms' name is called pride, okay? And you'll say, well, it don't eat much. I don't mind it being in there. But that worm, it grows and grows and grows and grows, finally to the place to where it's consuming everything that you're supposed to be getting. Is that making any sense to anybody, okay? And I don't got that one on my notes, but I'm telling you this, is I'm telling you, we need to allow the Lord to let his purging action take place. When he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood, I got to believe it takes care of the worms Come on. that's in us. I got to believe it takes care of all those things that are not necessary, that are robbing the nutri nutrients of what we need to be getting. Hallelujah. If, if I told you that I've stood by a well for six years and the thing dried up, and I remain to stand there by that well. But I stood there every day, disappointed that my well ran dry. What if that well was for a season instead of a lifetime? What if that well was only supposed to last you six years? And then you're to move on to a new location. And I'm not saying leave this church, but a new location in Christ, a greater belief in Christ. Okay, He'll allow seasons of drying up in your life that you'll say to yourself, Oh God, why would you allow this to even come in my life? Such pain, such suffering, such heartache. But there's nutrients. There's nutrients in that. What do you, what do you call when things decompose? And you got that compost pile out there and you put it on your flowers and your vegetable garden. Something died in order for something to have nutritious life. I want to get to the place to where I don't stand there and look at the well. Man, you, you've had good times. Me and this well have had a great time. Beautiful times. I have dipped truck after truck after truck out of this well. 
Do we think that God really knows where we're at at all times? Come on and preach. Do you think he knows what your tomorrow needs today? I know I ain't saying all the right things today, but hopefully I am putting something in you about nutritional wellness. And understanding this, that this life is a whole lot easier to live when we get the nutrients in there that Christ wants us to have. And if you've got them worms messing with you, they mess with your digestive system. They mess with your blood flow. There's so many things that these worms mess with that they don't have no right touching you at all. Can we bow our heads real quick? Say, Lord, if I've got any worms in me taking away the nutrients that you're trying to put in me, would you allow them to exit my body by any means? In Jesus' name, amen. And I'm closing with this. Paul's diet. I'm going to finish reading Philippians. Philippians 10, 4 and 10 says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again. Wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am. What does that say? Therewith be content. Where did, where did he get the nutrients to say that? Where did he get the bowl of, of ambition, peace, love, joy, to come up and say, in all things, okay? Therewith to be content, whatsoever state I'm at. Anybody want a bowl of that today? I want me a big old bowl of understanding of God. Whatever it takes for you to use me in whatever capacity, don't let me be malnutritioned to where your voice is even hard to be heard. And your, your will in me is hard to be understood sometimes. I got to believe Paul wrote from a place. He had not only had a heavenly perspective, but he had the nutrients in his mouth. Ever eat a good meal? You get there and you kind of wipe the teeth off with your tongue. And you wasn't really ready for it to be done. The flavors are just all in that mouth, okay? I believe eventually Paul got to the place to where the bitter wasn't so bitter. It got to mix with the, the, the will of his father that's in him. And I don't know what all that produces, but I can tell you this. He didn't want to spit it out. He wanted to relish it. He wanted to, he wanted to just keep swallowing and swallowing and swallow him because it's almost like what was set before him was greater than anything that was behind him. Could you imagine if your tomorrow is better than any day you've ever had in your lifetime? And your tomorrow started out with that sack lunch. And you put in there love, joy, and peace and all the things that you thought you needed. And then he starts naming other things and naming people. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state that I am therewith to be content. Philippians 4 and 12, I know both how to be abased and I know how to, be, to abound. And everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer the need. And I can do all things. Five words. Paul says there. Man, he took this personal. He, he, he's writing a letter. But man, when he gets to this place right here, and he says those five words. I. Now my brother, now my sister, I 
Put you in your own chest right now. Say, I. I. We're going to say it like we really mean it, church. Say, I. I. Can do all things. Do all, all things. things. Through Christ, Christ. Who strengtheneth me. If you'd stand with me right now. I wish I could have delivered this thing with a whole lot more floweriness, a whole lot more, boy, I'd like to listen to that message one more time stuff. But I do have to believe this. He wouldn't send a message of nutrition if it wasn't needed. It may have just been for me, and I'll take it just for me. And maybe you guys had to suffer through the message that was personal for me. But I'm going to tell you this. There's going to be a change in my life. I'm not only going to just take a bite of what he asked me to take a bite of. I, I'm, going to ha I'm going to ask him for the ability to never try to spit it out and let it just change flavor like that special gum they have. You get all those different flavors from just one piece of gum. I'm going to believe that it can start out real bitter. But then God just comes in and just like a sponge squeezes love into your mouth. And you'll say, how much love can you get out of that sponge, God? How much can you squeeze out of one sponge of love? And he'll look at you and say, son, you have no idea. You have no idea how I can change the flavor in your mouth. How I can change your heart, but in one moment. I can cause a tax collector to give back half of everything he's ever took from somebody and if he's done anything wrong, he'll pay them back fourfold. Bow your heads with me, please. Friend, if you've ever wanted nutrition, this is your day. You get you a whole big bowl of it today. Matter of fact, if you just put your hands out and say, God, whatever you want to feed me that you know I need of today, not yesterday's, today's. Would you fill these hands, Hallelujah. fill this mouth, and fill this belly full of your nutrition, full of your peace, full of your joy, full of your forgiveness, full of your love, and let every worm that is in my stomach and in my mind and in my heart, and let it just run all different so kinds of ways. And let me just be nothing but 100% filled with your goodness, filled with your mercy and filled with your compassion. This is my desire today, God. I want to just, I want to have a mouth full of you today, God. I don't want anything else in my life, God. Would you be my mouth full today, God? Would you be my heart full today, God? Would you consume me today, God? My Father, I love you. My Father, I worship you. My Father, I worship you. I worship you, God. I worship you, God. I worship you, God. Hallelujah. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. I'm no longer bound. There's no all oh, in my soul is resting. And it's such a such a blessing.